Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll start. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. So th this is Naina Patel and Ravi from uh, HP. And we're going to talk about the API and uh, what we have seen to date, uh, where the issues are uh, when we are testing with uh, Diablo Final and SX, and now Folsom. So we need some kind of community reactions on how we can get better at this. So we're going to do like, this is a discussion rather than I think uh, talking through uh, what our experiences are. So we will start with one section, which is a uh, documentation. So Ravi, you want to lead that? Yeah. So basically like uh, OpenStack API did a great job, like a development, QA, documentation. They did a great job and we came so far, right? All the functionalities were supported on top of Python client over REST APIs. But still, we have a lot of gaps. We can make a lot of improvements. That way like uh, we can make new users life very easy. They can come up to speed very quickly. Also, the bindings, right, which were based on top of uh, Python clients, they can know very well, uh, like what are the API changes happened, and they can uh, work accordingly. They can know what are the improvements they can make. Also, like a large scale deployments, right, they can know what are the API changes happened, what are the documentations, they can uh, implement very confidently. So primarily, like this is very brainstorm session. We expect, uh, two-way communications and then we want to take suggestions and then we can pass it on to the right teams. So primarily like we were involved in OpenStack QA teams, uh, discussions, decision making, all those things. So we have a stay there, stay there. So this the brainstorm session basically divided into four sections. Documentations, support, Q, uh, testing and then development. Okay, so first documentation, right? Yeah, like uh, each one may have different pain points. Uh, one pain point I observed is like there are uh, different source of uh, information, different source of truth. How we can have uh, one single source of truth that way like a user, they can go there, get all the information they want. Right now like they have to see Nova help, they have to see like uh, API, API doc, all those things. So today uh, when you look at the documentation, it's out of date. Right, and the only way you can figure out what's been implemented with APIs is you have to go dig into the code. So you have to really actually install the uh, dev stacks, look at the GitHub, look at the code, and figure out what change control is in implemented. So it's a very tedious work for somebody to get up to speed, and it's, uh, it's not a very user friendly for anyone to kind of figure out what changes has made it into the uh, trunk or master. So it becomes a very complex problem and we want to address and, uh, creating a process where I think the community can understand that maybe I think uh, when you submit a blueprint that has got documentation or API that's required to change or an additional API or with extensions or proposal, and I think we want to live feedback from the developers or people who are working with APIs here to kind of understand that when we, there is a blueprint, we need a, a discussions on the blueprint itself when the code is uh, written, maybe we need to kind of figure out a process where you get the code checked in and it's reviewed. And at some point in time, when it merges to the branch or str uh, trunk or master, we need to figure out how we're gonna get a documentation in place rather than later in the process. Because when you wait for so long, there's no one to kind of look at the documentation, kind of no one to look at whether the implementation went in rightly. So we are kind of, I think, uh, fostering uh, discussions here to kind of uh, get an idea from everyone on what the right way to think about is getting the documentation up to speed. So I would like to hear from, I think, uh, audience here. That's not happening, right? I mean, we all yeah. know that documentation uh, bugs uh, and uh, you know, getting the refactor of the documentation, that's Still not document happening today. No, 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 what I'm saying is when you, when you and your team yeah. are actually doing that and you're, you're finding out that the documentation is laggy, that are you creating bugs to the documentation process and saying, hey, this is how it is. I'm yeah. just going to this. We are. Yes. Yes, we are yes. doing it. We log a but bug that uh, this API, there is no documentation, then they are addressing it. Yeah. But still, like, we are one release behind on documentation. Yeah. Right now, like, still false some documentation not, not yet complete. 
So it's like catching up, right? Uh, it's like a race condition, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and also the challenge is now is, I mean, we, we have been working on this for last couple of releases from Diablo Final. The QA didn't exist at the time, and uh, we have come a long way, right? The problem we are facing is the community is growing, right, with a lot, lot, lot more people, and a lot of developers and uh, different type of, you know, business units are coming up. We need to kind of understand what are we sharing with those. I mean, getting into the code is not a very viable solution, right, for everyone. And I think that other gentleman just pointed out that uh, it's like, as a new person coming in, looking at the API, I don't know whether what to f expect, you know? Yeah, that means I need to understand the product, right? Right. Another thing we're finding is also that dev stack, and I have an uh, action item for Monty to talk about is the dev stack is not stable that we tagged with uh, the repo, right? So when the repo is uh, tagged, when the release is uh, out, we don't have a, a repo that says this dev stack also tags with that repo. Oh, yeah. So that's, so I've been told just recently by a couple of people, and I have to investigate this a little more, that that's not true. So when we cut the Folsom, so it would be good to kind of, I think, uh, put a note out to the community. Yeah, that would be good to kind of, you know, uh, state that. Because I think there is a lot of uh, misperception on that. So that is my thing to do because I found a lot of people talking about this over the weekend. And I have personally not checked because we're still working on dev stack on Folsom. And we didn't have any issues, but uh, someone else pointed out that there are issues. So this uh, documentation issue, right, should we consider API is complete only if there is a document available. It's a question if, uh, the if there is a no documentation, we can't say that the API is complete. Only if uh, API plus a documentation available, then only releases should happen, right? So who, who would take these action items to the community? I mean, the uh, PLs, right? Because this has to be uh, filtered down to the PL. It's a process improvements that we are suggesting, you know. And knowing that there is not that whole lot of QA people who are involved, you know, in testing this as well, that makes it a little difficult for the voices to raise up. Uh, we had a panel. Uh, did you attend? A few no. of, I think, uh, some somebody from our, our team attended, right? Ronald, you, you attended, yes. Um, so Annie's there? One session had me, one session had me. Yeah, Ronald. Two sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think it's very interesting. No. <laughs> so that's...
So we are actively now looking at that process as well. So yeah. uh, every, like everyone else, right, we have challenges and I think we need to kind of get this in the community that anyone who finds that needs to raise those bugs, you know, yeah. not only HP, right? I mean, there are a lot, our QA team is actively involved, but there are other parts of the organization and companies that have QA or even the developers. We encourage everyone to kind of you know, participate in this process. So it would be kind of nice to kind of put it in the mailing list. I think it would be good for documentation mailing list to go out this yeah. process. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because to monitor every check in, right? It's like a, a really a nightmare for anyone, you know. <laughs> So we want to next move section. on to the next topic. Uh, next topic is about support. Support for API. So right now, like uh, we provide support for REST API and Python. But uh, other than that, there are so many clients, so many languages. For example, JClouds or like uh, uh, Ruby bindings. All those, there are different things. Windows PowerShell, all those things. As so in OpenStack, do we commit? We'll be supporting JClouds or we are supporting uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby on Rails, that kind of things, right? Uh, right now, like uh, users, they just keep guessing. They are not sure whether they should be picking up uh, J clouds, right? So. <laughs> so Yeah, primarily like at HP hpcloud.com, we provide support for Ruby bindings, yeah, Java, Java clouds, PHP bindings, Windows PowerShell, Unix shell, all those things. Yeah. So it will be nice if you know uh, how, how much important. support is there. Yeah. Okay, so next one, uh, EC2 support. Yeah, next one is EC2 support. OpenStack, we provide EC2 support, but Amazon is making a lot of changes, right? They are adding new APIs or modifying existing ones. So we are not sure we are 100% covered or is there any gap? 
So if there is anything like that, uh, it will be good. Uh. So there is a mixed bag of you know, communication on ECQ supporting community. And I think we need to understand from the development community, are we supporting all the functions that are in OS today with JSON and XML, uh, similar to what EC support is? Because we keep hearing that it's gonna be deprecated. And I uh, would like, love to hear that, you know, where are we going and what is our roadmap that looks like, you know? I thought they're pulling EC2 and S3 out of OpenStack. Yes, that's what I'm asking is the question. Is it, I saw in emails along that line, deprecating EC2, is that true or can we put a statement around that uh, so that I guess uh, the people who are using this at least understands our stain for the community? So anyone wants to volunteer or? Probably not a whole lot, right? But yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Does anyone care about the EC2 APIs anymore? I mean, it's a, it's a valid question. It was a question that comes from the community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I don't think we, we can represent that question, you know. Uh, there are probably uh, distro, there are, uh, you know, uh, integrators, so we have no idea. I mean, there's a difference between removing it from OpenStack and saying it will never, you can't call it, it will never exist. I mean, it will be just a compatibility layer kept separately. I mean, right. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, big time, yeah. 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 I know last uh, conference uh, with Folsom, we talked about in San Francisco, talked about this contract on API. Anybody knows where we are and what we're doing with that, you know, uh, uh, where are we positioning ourselves with that process for API and contract? Maybe this should be a part of that discussion as well. Because I haven't seen any further, you know, uh, discussions on that topic. So this is a big right, uh, discussion. Uh, and we don't know how to take this forward, but we'd love to see you know, some traction on this. And maybe yeah. the PL is the right you know, a team yeah. to kind of insert this into their design uh, discussions. So maybe we should talk about that in yeah. there, yeah. So actually, like every time that's going on, uh, supporting or de-supporting EC2, data problems. We also, we want to talk about JSON support and XML. Um, where do we stand on that? Uh, yeah, so. uh, primarily like we are supporting JSON data formats out of the box. But uh, there is a need for XML also. And in the meetings, right, OpenStack meeting, they discussed about providing XML support. So we have to have a clear cut uh, definition of what are the data formats we are going to support. One may be like primary, JSON may be primary, and uh, some data formats may be secondary, but we should have some clear cut uh, definition. Mm -hmm. As uh, maybe like uh, data formats could be uh, growing up further, but uh, we should have like a clear cut uh, definition how much we are going to support. If there are any issues come up on XML, are we going to address only critical issues or even like minor issues also we are going to address that kind of support things we need to know. Seems like I think we are moving towards API. API is central you know, uh, integration for everyone and uh, that's where how the entire system talks to each other. We need to think about, I think in the community about uh, contract and need to get serious about it. How do we you know, expose API? What kind of data formats do we use? What are clients? I think there is a whole notion on the API subject itself. And uh, would love to see somebody in the development community leading this effort to kind of have a, a clear cut, you know, uh, transparency and standardizing the processes or the formats. 
So I don't know how we should probably take this forward. Who is the decision making uh, on this? There have been several discussions in the community, uh, even in the you know, um, uh, meetings, ex chat. Uh, ex -chat last year con uh, contract discussions in sessions, but nothing has been, you know, uh, moved forward. And uh, would love to see something, you know, along that line. Because this is, I think, our, you know, a bigger chunk and challenges that uh, as the product comes in and we don't have some standard processes and documenting and also understanding the data formats, clients, we're gonna be having a lot of issues with the integrator and even the large deployments on how do we go from one release to another. So there's a whole DevOps model here. So there's a whole you know, integrator issues, distro. So we need to figure out where we want to go forward with this. So I don't know. I mean, I think uh, anybody has suggestions because this is a big topic that I think we would like to you know, discuss at a higher level. Yeah, exactly. I guess we are not talking about only our needs, right? I mean, I, I don't know in this room how many people are using this and maybe they need to speak up as well, right? This is our observations, yeah. you know, and also I think dealing with this, dealing this and day in and out. <laughs> so I'm sure I think there are a lot more people who are using this also and uh, would love to hear their, you know, feedback and comments uh, on these problems as well. Silence is nobody's using it. <laughs> <laughs> Take these specific questions to take care of. Yeah. I think that brings up to also versioning, right? Uh, yeah. And also backward compatibility, forward compatibility, because. Um, we are looking at the deployments, right? And I think people are trying to use this in a large operations as well. So we really need to think about that seriously as well. Yeah. I think there was a discussion earlier on data migration. This is similar to that, okay? How can you deprecate a, a, a function that was working? So there's a deprecation of functions. Uh, there's also, you know, a versioning support uh, for changes. So this in itself is a big topic. I think we need to probably raise it. So that's fine. I think we'll put something out, uh, a, a kind of proposal for PPB to review again one more time for the technical committee. Yeah. And uh, probably take this uh, and see what, where we can get the answer. Yeah. And we can put some specific examples uh, in some of these areas as well. Yeah, that includes the backward compatibility also. Yeah. If you have like so many clients, right? You don't want to upgrade to the latest Python client 2.9 if you don't want to leverage latest APIs. So what happens, right? Uh, if I want to use old version of uh, Python client, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, are we supporting whether it will work? That kind of information, if it is available. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the life cycle, right? Life cycle, uh, right, yeah. That, that How many? Today, yes. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
just map to this at this point in time and, and so on. And supporting multiple libraries, you know, that, yeah. that becomes a challenging, yeah. right? It's, just a <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. it's not a very pretty picture when you have a, you know, a, a, a dashboard sitting on top of it and then how do you manage that, you know, through right. the dashboard as well. So it's a whole layer of integration issues. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then also debugging, right? And uh, there is an issue. How do you debug that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So should we cover testing because yes. no one from QA team, right? That's okay. Generally, we need to cover the yeah. testing. Yeah. Yeah. Testing side. So we actively work with the uh, OpenStack QA team but still like uh, we want to mention some of the issues we run into. One is like uh, we are doing extensive testing with uh, REST APIs, and so, but uh, our testing coverage for EC2 or Python clients is, uh, doesn't exist now. So that's uh, one of the issue. And then Tempest, I think we need to take it look forward. Tempest is a, 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 a framework that uh, we settled in for API testing. But today Tempest only supports like positive test yeah, and uh, also sometimes when you look at the negative test that we want to look at from the API perspective, uh, the notion is that we can't put it into the repos or we can't you know, check it in. So we need to come up with a, a bet better you know, uh, testing tools that would allow us to do negative test and also the positive test for APIs. And the Tempest is uh, today is just a kind of, I think, uh, supports mostly positive uh, part of the you know, functions. It. So it's very you know, um, restricted. And maybe I think this is something that we need to talk to like uh, the QA teams and see how we can improve and get some more you know, test added to the APIs. Yeah. So something breaks or error codes, you know, return Boundary to error conditions, code. error Boundary. conditions. Limits quotas, right? So, yes, we yeah. already have a lot of those tests, but we need to yeah. push it. But we need to figure out what's the best mechanism to push those out because of the limitation of Tempest. Also, regarding API performance, right? Uh, we don't know like what is what should be the response time. Then if you have base response time, then we can compare over the releases. Are we doing good in Folsom release for the particular API? So that kind of API, API performance also, right now we lag and there are gaps. So some kind of, I think when you're writing the code, uh, when you're writing the code, you're writing the code for some kind of, you know, uh, thresholds. And it would be nice to expose those thresholds or document somewhere where people can probably use that to measure their metrics. Is. That's true. Yeah. But at least the restriction uh, from the code perspective would be nice to kind of filter up, you know. Yeah, but uh, dev stack, right? It the is the same environment. Uh, yeah. It can run over and over again. That reference implementation is just dev stack. <laughs> and uh, oh, we also have, uh, of course, uh, the one cloud that we're running with uh, uh, Rexspace. And that's like multi-node system. It doesn't test the uh, performance or doesn't, it just runs Tempest, which is a positive test on API. That's pretty much what it does. Yeah. But we should have some benchmark and we should be able to compare, right? Over the release, are we doing good? Yeah, it's a tricky, I agree, but. Uh, I guess better way to put is characteristics of, you know, uh, the services that are in test would be a better way to handle this. Okay, next. Uh, Next is uh, like uh, development topics. Yeah. Next one uh, is regarding development, right? 
there are uh, so many changes happening on architectural side, and we don't know the impact on the front end or API side. For example, like uh, UUID, there are some changes happened, architectural changes. So existing implementation, right? We want to migrate to the new release. We don't know what are the impacts on the backend side, whether we will lose data because of the changes, that kind of things. So if the blueprint that address the architectural changes, if they say uh, there are no implications on the API side or upgrade side, then uh, it will be like very useful to the deployments over deploying it. So it's basically filtering all the information out to the you know, wider yeah. community. Yeah, right now blueprint doesn't give much information. Right? If it gives over implements that API, eh, they can uh, get benefited. And the last but least, bug prioritization. Yeah, this may be like, uh, we Related talked about that, that uh, yeah, specific clients. So these are our observations. These are something that I think we need to kind of do the improve uh, some of the processes. So it allows you know, us to kind of focus more on a good solid test plans or testing. So we will write a proposal to PPB on the uh, API contracts and see where it goes. But I would love to hear from development community what else you know you guys uh, propose. So any other issues you have seen? Exactly. Yeah. That's, a, that's a ex a extremely valid point because to date we have been only addressing the fresh installs. Now as the releases goes further and we are adding a lot more you know, products and components, we need to start seriously thinking about the upgrade path and the support of that. Because there are a lot of you know, companies who are deploying that, including distro integrations, all that, and we need to understand you know, how do you take that forward without breaking you know, my existing customers' workloads. So that's that. I really wish it was centered for the power and safety. Yes. Yeah. It seems the blueprint has like one line to change. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, with Grizzly, we'd love to see that, you know, um, uh, discussion with, with any new changes that's going to be proposed or any incubator projects that are coming up. The implica implication of backward compatibility with the teams that has deployed, you know, the Folsom, for example, and how do you go to Grizzly would be a nice thing to kind of even for test development, right? If there are more details provided in the blueprint, yeah. then we can write the test accordingly. So I think that concludes our presentation and our you know, uh, observations that we have. Uh, any questions or you know, feedback, comments? Pretty quiet group, huh? Okay, then I think that's it. If nobody has any questions, thank you for your participation and thanks. Thank you very much.